Penske Media Corporation is a company that owns many, many brands. We buy strong publishing brands such as Rolling Stone Magazine, Variety, and Deadline in the entertainment space, and we manage technology centrally. We wanted to ensure that the engineers were building technology that was best for our readers. Managing a portfolio is very, very different than managing a single product. So we can see patterns and that allows us to prioritize those features that we know um, all of the brands could benefit from. We have developed a system that we call Core Tech. This is a set of both front-end websites, um, wireframes and designs that we have tested and optimized to know that they are uh, revenue positive with back-end code that is the same for all of our websites because Penske grows through acquisition. When we acquire a new media company, it's very cost-effective for us to migrate that new website onto our core tech platform without adding a lot of technology heads. I don't have to hire a lot of new engineers to support one additional brand. Women in technology is a topic that is a true passion point for me. I have about 65 employees and of them, 25 of them are women. We've gone very, very upstream into the hiring and recruiting process. We've rewritten all of our job descriptions to make women and diverse candidates feel included and welcome. We have one woman in every round of interviews and the same group of people interview each candidate for any role and ask the same questions so that we're evaluating them um, objectively, from recruiting all the way through to mentoring, we are attracting the best women and we also retain them. They want to stay. And I'm really, really proud of the work that we've done with women in technology. So we've all read that print is dead. Years ago, between five and 10 years ago, Penske Media Corporation saw this coming and evolved to invest in the digital technology needed to publish online. So we have invested in our core technology system, on all our publishing platform that the editors use to write their stories every day. Mm -hmm. So we have brands that are print and digital. We have brands that are digital only. We have some brands that have mobile apps that people open every morning when they wake up. We have some that get delivered to their homes in print. We are very, very specific on the business strategy to assess brand by brand for what works for that brand. Digital transformation on the back end is completely changing business efficiency. How do we transform the world of media publishing in a way that still makes it satisfying for our reader. We do that via a lot of testing. We do that via interviewing readers and users. So when my IT team migrates all of our servers to the cloud so that we can be faster, more nimble, more efficient, it makes a business run smarter. In the world of COVID, I would say subscriptions and data are two big areas of investment. We have a data warehouse that pulls in hundreds of data sources, which we can then analyze and drive both reports and machine learning and AI using vast data warehouse and data collection efforts that we have to both make smarter decisions, but also to drive our technology through smarter algorithms. Right now, the entire media world is trying to figure out how do you create beautiful, engaging, meaningful content? How do you create that when you can't go out in the world? That's a short-term question that the media world is figuring out. This revolution of data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, how do you blend the technology with the human? Because media is inherently human. People telling stories that people want to consume. So it's gonna be this blend of pushing the envelope of data and intelligence, but in a way that stays human. Otherwise, nobody's gonna to wanna to watch that movie or listen to that podcast or read that article.